Hey guys, Cody Shashelsky from CodeByCody.com and I'm back with another Salesforce.com development tutorial. Today we're going to build this loading screen that you can implement on any Visual Force page with a single line of code. Stay tuned, I'll show you how we do it. This tutorial should be pretty straightforward. The heart of the solution is a Visual Force page component, so let's start by adding one of those. I already have an instance of the developer console open here, so let's add our component and we'll choose File, New, and select Visual Force Component. And I'm going to name it Loading Dialog. You can certainly call it something else if you choose. Just know that in this tutorial, as well as the sample code on my blog, I'm going to refer to it as loading dialog, so you want to make sure and modify that code as necessary. So we'll click OK, and I'm just going to paste in some code here. This code is all on my blog, codebycody.com. There will be a link to the specific article in the description below. What the code does is not so much important for this tutorial. This is really more about how we implement it. But we will go over this uh, component just very briefly here so we know what's going on. At the top here we have three attributes. Title, message, and width. And these are going to be attributes in the tag when we call this component. You'll notice they're all optional. They're not required. And they all have defaults. The title obviously is going to be the title of the dialog box. The message is going to be sort of some paragraph text that lives inside the box. And the width is an integer which represents the width of the dialog box in pixels. Next we have a style block here. We have all of our CSS. And on my blog post for this video, again see the description for the link, uh, it's going to have a table of all of these uh, IDs and classes and style selectors that you can go and override if you choose to. So the next thing here is our script tag and I do want to mention that uh, when I wrote this it was really important to me that this be very portable so I'm not relying on any frameworks like JavaScript or Bootstrap or anything else. Even the image that we're using as our spinner is an image that's hosted already in Salesforce. So it makes it very easy to take this code and put it into any org. As a matter of fact, I put this into almost every org that I work in and it's really useful. So with that being said, let's jump down and check out our JavaScript here. Uh, there's really only four uh, functions here that we care about. Um, we've got a show loading dialog and a hide loading dialog. Those do exactly what you would think. You know, they show and hide the box. The next two are the set loading dialog title and message functions. They both take string arguments and they allow you to change and reset the title and message after you've initialized the component on your Visual Force page. The rest of the code here is just the helper methods that help calculate the sizes when you resize the browser and the actual DOM of the dialog box. So we'll go ahead and save this and we'll jump over to our Visual Force page. Okay, so I already have the shell of the Visual Force page here. You can see that we have a custom controller and we also have a section header. And then we're gonna fill in the contents of the page here in the form. So the, what this page does is not really so important for the purpose of this tutorial, but just to give you an idea of what's going on, uh, the page is gonna render a pick list that shows all of our accounts and when we select that and click a button that we'll create, it's going to bring back a list of all the contacts. Very simple. Uh, again, what the page does, not so important. How we implement the loading dialog box is really what we're talking about here. So let's just jump over to the controller real fast just to kind of see what's going on. I've got a couple of properties here uh, for the pick list. And we've got our list of contacts we're going to... Uh, show and I'm also keeping account of those contacts so that if the account has no contacts we'll just hide the list. I've got a constructor here that just sets a couple of uh, defaults and also gets all of our accounts. I also have a method here called get contacts 
And that's the method we're going to call from the buttons we create on our visual force page. And you see, it just gets a list of the contacts from the selected account and spits that back to the contacts property here. And then it also sets the contact count. So let's jump back over to the visual force page and start coding. Okay, so we want to keep the Salesforce design language. So inside our form tag, I'm going to paste in some code here. It looks very familiar, probably if you've done much uh, Apex development. We have a page block with page block sections and page block section items. Also, if you look down here, uh, I've wrapped this page block inside of an output panel, and that's because we're going to call our get contacts method asynchronously and cause a partial page update. So I want to define a region of the page that will be updated during that async call. And just a side tip, you'll notice the layout equals none attribute here. This is going to prevent the output panel from rendering an extra superfluous tag, such as a span tag or a div tag. So that just helps keep our document object model a little bit cleaner. So now we can turn our attention to the page block button section. And I'm just going to paste in an apex command button. Uh, value is equal to get contacts. That's what we want the text of the button to say. And the action is get contacts. So right now we're just doing a synchronous call to the server. But let's save that and test it out. I'll click preview here. And as you can see, we have a list of our accounts. I'll select an account. Let's say Edge Communications and click Get Contacts. And you see there was a round trip to the server. The entire page refreshed and we got our list of contacts. But we want to do this asynchronously with a partial page update. So let's go back to our Visual Force page and make that happen. The first thing I want to do here is I want to click on the Command button here. And I'm going to add a re-render attribute and I'm going to pass in the ID of our output panel that's the part of the page you want to refresh and we'll click save and also on my controller I have injected some fake latency here let's just uncomment this code it's essentially just a long-running loop and it can simulate a long-running apex process or it can simulate a poor network performance so I'm just adding this in there to sort of exaggerate the point and to show you why this loading screen is important for the user experience. So we'll go back to our page and it should have refreshed already. So we'll click Edge Communication and click Get Contacts. And you'll notice nothing seems to be happening as a user. I don't know, did I click it? Should I click it again? Why is it taking so long? I have no feedback. And then all of a sudden the partial page refresh happens and we have our list of contacts there. So that's not a good experience. So as promised, we're now going to implement the loading dialog box with a single line of code. So let's jump back to our visual force page here. And we're going to scroll to the top just below the page declaration. Oops. And we're just going to say C colon. And that should bring up a list of all of the components in your org, and in this case I have one, it's the loading dialog, I'll click that. And you see here we have all of our attributes we defined earlier. I'm okay with the default message and the width, but I am gonna overwrite the title here, and I'm gonna call it Getting Contacts. And with that single line of code, we have taken all that CSS and HTML and JavaScript and injected it into our page. So all we have to do now is call it from our command button and we'll do that using a couple of attributes here. First we'll use the on click. This attribute tells the command button to execute this client side code before it goes to the server and runs our get contacts method. So we're going to call the method that we saw earlier in our dialog box called show loading dialog. And then there's also another attribute called onComplete. So we'll add that here, onComplete. And this is a JavaScript callback that will fire after the partial page update is complete. And we're going to call our hide loading dialog JavaScript method. And let's save that. And our page should refresh. And we can try it again. Okay, so we can go ahead and select Edge Communications. 
click the get contacts and there you go we have a working loading dialog box it has the getting contacts title that we overwrote when we initialized the component and when the partial page updates complete the box goes away so that is a much better user experience but with little tweaks we can make it even better so let's jump back to our developer console and I'm gonna create a second button on the page here so it's gonna be an apex command button the value is going to be get contacts and then in parentheses we're going to say set title and many of these other attributes will be the same so I'm just going to copy and paste them here and let's put this on its own line and then we can modify the on click and on complete attributes so what I want to do with this button is actually modify the title each time the button is clicked if you remember back on our loading dialog box code we had this set loading dialog box title and message so I'm gonna call this one here let's copy that and we'll jump over here and before our on click event fires the show loading dialog I first want it to fire the set loading dialog title and you can put any text you want in here just for testing let's just write testing to make sure it's working and anytime you set the title with an on click event it's good to go ahead and set it back to its default on the on complete event so we'll say getting contacts was our default we'll put that in here and the reason for this is let's say you had five or six buttons on a page there could be some at the top some at the bottom there could be links uh, and many of them are going to do different things on your page but you only want to use a single component up here this allows you to set the title and message right before it's displayed on the screen and then set it back so it's ready to use the next time so let's save this and wait for our page to refresh and we'll go try it first we'll check edge communications and we'll click our get contacts method and you see it still says get contacts as we expect and we'll wait for that to go away and this time let's click our get contacts set title and you'll notice it says testing as we expect and then we'll call it one more time just to make sure that at the on complete method it's setting it back so we'll click get contacts and of course it says getting contacts that's our default text so everything is working as expected now obviously the word testing is not a good user experience it doesn't really tell us anything so let's make this a little bit more meaningful and custom so I'm gonna replace this text with getting contacts for and a space and then I'm going to paste in a little piece of JavaScript here and this JavaScript is just going to uh, get the selected account name from the pick list so we've got that and it has a function of get selected account name so after our get contacts for and I'm going to concatenate that text with the output of that JavaScript function and we'll save that wait for our page to refresh and we'll try it again we'll choose edge communications and get contacts set title and it's working just fine getting contacts from edge communications we'll wait for that to go away and let's try it again with s force we'll get contacts and you see it's updating our dialog box here so this is all working great there's one more thing I want to show you and that's how you can use this with an action function so let's jump back over to our developer console one more time and I'm going to scroll up here and just inside my form tag I'm going to add a, an apex action function and if you're not familiar with action functions what they do is basically expose a server side method from your controller as a JavaScript function you can call from an HTML element like an input tag so there's a couple of attributes we want to set here the first is the action this is the apex function that we want to call so this uses merge 
field syntax here. So I'm going to say get contacts. Next, we want to set the name attribute. And this is what the actual name of the JavaScript function will be called. You can call it anything you want. I'm going to use the same name as our Apex function. So get, oops, get contacts. We want to add a re-render attribute because we want this to fire asynchronously and do a partial page update. So now we need a control on our page to update this. So I'm going to use just a standard HTML input tag input type oops, type equals button and then value is equal to get contacts and then in parentheses we're going to say action function if we want to inherit the style that salesforce uses with its other buttons we'll say class is equal to btn and then we're going to give it an on click event. And we'll, let's terminate this while we're thinking about it. Now, the first thing we want to do on the on click method is to show our loading dialog box. And the next thing is, oops, let me fix this get contacts. The next thing we want to do is call our JavaScript function get contacts. Now we don't have an on complete callback on an input tag by default. So we're going to use the onComplete attribute from our action function tag. So we'll add that onComplete equals, and that's where we're going to call our method to hide the loading dialog box. And we'll click save, and we should be good to go. Let's go test it out. So let's select edge communications and get contacts from action function. We see our loading dialog box, it's working, and hopefully if things worked well, it should go away and we should see our contacts here. And that worked perfectly. So the last thing to do, and be sure if you're using my sample code that you go back into the controller and comment out this line that's adding latency, or better yet, just delete it from your class altogether. Don't let that hit production. There's no need to make your users wait any longer for data. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it helped you out in some way. If it did, I would really appreciate comments. If I left something out, let me know that as well. If there's more tutorials you want to see, please leave those in the comments. Please click that subscribe button. Please share this with your friends and colleagues. I really, really do appreciate it. And also, please follow the links to codebycody.com where you'll see this tutorial with all the sample code as well as many others. I really appreciate it. Thanks and have a great day.